Want to know why the markets went up over 600 points yesterday and what that really means? I'm going to show you. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst, and welcome to ITM Trading. Now, yesterday, we know that all the markets have been in a bear market. And yesterday, the market went up 671 points. That was really a dead cat bounce. And we all know that dead cats can only bounce so high. But let me show you how, with just a little bit, oops, oh, I'm so sorry, I goofed that up. It's, all right, bear with me, here we go. So I'm going to show you what was really going on because Jay Powell a month-ish ago said that they were the interest rates were way below the neutral level of what would stimulate or hold back an economy. And he was justifying, because the economy is so strong and wonderful, he was justifying the ability to continue to raise the rates. But the markets have gone into way worse than correction territory. They've actually gone into bear market territory, dropping really too far too fast with market breakdowns that are actually pretty easy to see when you can see the pattern shift in there. So maybe he killed a little bit to the pressure from the president or from the markets themselves. And what he did was let the markets know that, well, maybe he wouldn't be raising the rates. They wouldn't be raising the rates so fast. And of course, that there are no preset policy, policy paths. And so Wall Street said, woohoo, he's not taking the whole punch bowl away really fast. But he also said, and I want to quote this because I'm going to show you the financial stability report that just came out yesterday in this next slide. Uh, sometimes I wonder, do these guys ever read what they write before they then speak? Or maybe it's just that they don't think anybody else will read it. Unfortunately, I read it. But from this quote, from the financial stability perspective, however, Today, we do not see any dangerous excesses in the stock market, indicating that the stock market was not severely overvalued. Well, interestingly enough, because when you go into the brand new, this is the very first financial stability report, also published yesterday or on the 28th, uh, they, the very first piece was, this is on page nine, asset valuation pressures show that all of the assets are overvalued. Whether it's the leveraged loans or the high yield bonds, the riskiest part of the bond market that is not paying you because of the suppression of the rates, not paying you for the level of risk that you have taken on. And keep in mind that these are mostly syndicated now, which means converted into Wall Street products and sold back to you or if it's even the stock market, above their median values over the past 30 years, despite the recent price declines. Remember, this was just published uh, on the 28th. And that's because the price has zoomed up, but not so much for the earnings. And when you consider all of the stock buybacks, which actually then makes look per share owner uh, earnings, look a lot higher, you really have to question that. But what are the insiders doing? Because frankly, anybody can say anything they want. What are they doing? Well, we've been watching them sell their stocks in drove. They understand that they are severely overvalued. 
And they also talked about real estate, all kinds of real estate, commercial real estate, residential real estate, as well as farmland, showing how the prices have gone up so much faster than the rents that the capitalization rates, in other words, the ability to make money from this investment is at or near all time lows. So what I really want you to understand in here is all of that free money, all of that new money creation, all of that quantitative easing, that QE that they targeted at stocks, at bonds, at real estate, to reflate the reflation trade that they talked about all the time. The party definitely appears to be over. But now why didn't he say that in his speech yesterday? Instead he said that the economy is strong and hey, the stock market doesn't look severely overvalued. Those are not quotes, but that's the gist of what he said. That's because if he were really honest, if any of these guys that get out there in front of the public were really honest about what they know, you would make different choices. You would probably make more choices like the, the elites and the powers that be are making for themselves. Thank you, daddy. Do what I say and not what I do. Never made, didn't make sense to me when I was growing up and I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't make sense to me now because when that happens, you're not in integrity. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But what I want to show you is that the markets don't really believe this because what this is a couple days ago, grim stock signals piling up as wall street malls recession odds. Well, this is a real key here for the NASDAQ because just a couple days ago, it hit a death cross. This is when the shorter term moving average crosses below the longer term moving average. Technically, we've talked about this even as we've been watching this unfold. This is not a good sign. It signals that the most likely outcome is a lot more damage ahead. The markets know they're overvalued. So now I would not say that this is quite pervasive yet, the difference between those moving averages. We want to see that get wider or wider or hey, maybe they'll get the cat to bounce some more. <laughs> maybe it'll cross above it again. Time is going to tell us that we're going to pay paying really close attention, but we do know that the number of stocks that are in bear market territory below 20% or more below their uh, recent beginning of October, all time highs is huge. Whether you're looking at the Dow or the NASDAQ or, you know, or any of the other indexes, we're seeing the same thing. And so what really are people doing that understand the truth of what's happening? Well, even lovely Wells Fargo, which you guys know, not my favorite. I mean, it's, it's, it's scandal after scandal, but even they're saying we're now positive on gold. And interestingly, as I showed you yesterday, central banks have been buying it 22% year over year with more central banks buying and bar and coin, coin demand also year over year rose 28%. So with all of that increased demand in the physical market, the spot market year over year declined. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. In a free market, when demand exceeds supply, prices go up. When supply exceeds demand, that's when prices go down. In the physical markets, there's so much. That's it. However much that is, whatever that number is, that amount is, that's how much of it there is, period, end of discussion. So when you have bar and coin demand going up like that and central bank demand going up like that, that's a, that's a chunk. That's not everything because we have manufacturing, we have lots of other things. But when you have that demand, why is the market going down? 
because it's a derivative. The spot market is a derivative. It's a derivative of gold. They want you to believe that it's the value of gold and they want you to stay away from gold. They do not want you or me to use gold as a flight to safety asset, but that's what they're doing for themselves. So you can believe what they show you or you can see what they do and you can protect yourself. Here we go, guys. Quite honestly, the only thing that I like better than a cheap 64 is a cheap 65. You don't get them often, but here's one, and it's an awful pretty coin. That is my protection from these markets that they know absolutely positively are severely overvalued and I mean, honestly, it really does look like the beginning of the end has already begun. I was, I was not sure that we were going to see that, but it really does appear that the benefit of the tax breaks that they got at the beginning of the year has already worn off, already worn off. And keep in mind, they went from what, 35% to 21%? That's huge. And still, even with that huge windfall, the difference between the earnings and the stock price still don't make any sense at all. But buy reflation trade. So when they need to goose the markets because there's already so much technical damage that are being done, that's a dead cat bounce. That's not real and it's not lasting. And next week, we'll have to see what happens with the G20. Next week, we'll talk about that. So we're, we're winding up at least the week at this point. Um, and that's pretty much it for today. I want you to just keep in mind that shields are made of metal, not paper or promises. And if I'm right, and if this is indeed something that they will not be able to manipulate our way out of, because remember, these markets have been imploding, not because there's been an influx of sellers, but because the buyers have not shown up. It's not good. What do you think is going to happen when these people get their quarterly statement and go, oh no, this is not good. I want my money. What happens when that selling picks up? You'll be out before that happens would be my suggestion. You obviously get to do whatever you want. And in some cases, you don't really even have an option. So in that case, you need to make sure that you're properly diversified so that if you lose all access to that, this will give you that access back to at least that chunk of wealth. We have a strategy. It's based upon those repeatable patterns. It's one that I'm executing myself. I developed it for myself. But hey, you might as well share it. So that's what we do here at ITM. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't have a plan, you are planning to fail. And you may not have a whole lot of time left because the reflation trade is a dead cat. Even dead cats can bounce for a minute. This does not look good. So until next week, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.